Today, we honor the memory of the six million Jews and millions of others who were systematically murdered in the Holocaust by the Nazis and their collaborators. This year's anniversary takes place under the shadow of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has revealed long-standing fractures and injustices in our societies and contributed to a resurgence in antisemitism and xenophobia. The Holocaust was the culmination of two millennia of discrimination, attacks, expulsions, and periodic mass killings of Jews. It should have ended antisemitism for good, but it did not. Antisemitism, unfortunately, remains alive and well. Today, white supremacists and neo-Nazis are resurgent, organizing and recruiting across borders, intensifying their efforts to deny, distort, and rewrite history, including the Holocaust. The COVID-19 pandemic has given them new opportunities to target minorities based on religion, race, ethnicity, nationality, sexual orientation, disability, and immigration status. We must make urgent joint efforts to stop them. As we consider the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, we must address the fragilities and gaps exposed by the pandemic and strengthen our mutual bonds based on our common humanity. This year must be a year of healing, healing from the pandemic and healing our broken societies in which hatred has all too easily taken root. As we remember those who died in the Holocaust and honor the survivors, our best tribute is the creation of a world of equality, justice and dignity for all. Hello, friends and dear colleagues. It's my pleasure to greet you for this concert to mark the International Day of Commemoration in the Memory of the Victims of the Holocaust. Today is an opportunity to remember and to reflect on the devastating suffering of the past, but also on what we can do now and in the future to ensure that this can never happen again. Many years have passed since the Holocaust but the threat posed by anti-Semitism is still with us today. We can see it all too frequently, and it is in your and my responsibility to prevent and wholeheartedly reject acts of anti-Semitism wherever we encounter them. Also, we must strongly condemn any act of violence that causes suffering and attacks the dignity of our fellow human beings. We must educate ourselves and future generations about the memory of the victims of the Holocaust. And we must attack the roots of hatred that allow anti-Semitism to fester, especially online and on social media. Reject anti-Semitism. Stop acts of violence. Undertake, instead, acts of kindness and solidarity. That's what I hope this music today will bring to you. The message that we are here to work together to build a better world where the dignity of every human being is upheld and protected. This is especially important as we strive to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic and the ways in which some people have twisted the crisis to promote hatred and division. We need solidarity, not division. So my thanks to the UN Chamber Music Society of the UN Staff Recreation Council for organizing this inspiring event. To all of you tuning in across the world, I hope you enjoy this special commemorative concert. Thank you. Greetings. My name is Brenda Von Gova, founder of the UN Chamber Music Society. Today's special commemorative concert is held on the annual UN observance to honor the memory of the victims of the Holocaust. The Holocaust resulted in the murder of one third of the Jewish people, along with countless members of other minorities. It will forever be a warning to all people of the dangers of hatred, bigotry, racism, and prejudice. The founding principle of the Charter of the United Nations to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war is testimony to the indelible link between the United Nations and the unique tragedy of the Second World War. The concert's classical music program will feature Jewish composers and will open and close with the recitations of Jewish prayers recorded in the Treblinka and Buchenwald concentration camps. The atrocities of the Holocaust and the injunction to heed its lessons of rejecting cruelty and evil 
are remembered in stories told through literature, arts, and music. This concert will feature a musical composed by Michael Kuhn, based on Anne Frank's diaries, as well as a ballet opera about the work of German Jewish artist Charlotte Solomon, who painted her life story in over a thousand paintings that summon the lost world of her childhood. This ballet opera composed by Michel de Bucci won a prestigious Faust Prize, Germany's highest honor in theater and dance. I'd like to thank all the musicians and friends of the UN Chamber Music Society, including the UN Undersecretary General for Global Communications, Melissa Fleming, as well as the director of the Hannah Rent Center, Professor Roger Berkowitz, for their support on this occasion. Thank you for using music to carry on their memories, scars, and stories of the survivors, those lost, and their family members. And may the music you're about to hear help us reflect on the devastating suffering of the Holocaust and remind us that all the dignity of every human being must be protected and that we are all equal. I thank you.
Germany in 1933. She was later imprisoned in Gurr's detention camp where she escaped and came to New York. In 1960, she attended the trial of Adolf Eichmann in Jerusalem. She went, she explained, because, quote, I wanted to see one of the chief culprits of the Holocaust with my own eyes as he appeared in the flesh. Arendt was moved by the testimony of many speakers, including Zindel Grinspan. His tale of suffering and brutality led to her belief that, quote, everyone, everyone should have its day in court. She told the story of Abba, Abba Kovner, who himself told the story of Anton Schmidt, a German sergeant who, without taking any money, helped Kovner and many other Jewish partisans escape and survive. As Kovner told the story, and as Arendt writes, quote, a hush settled over the courtroom. And in those two minutes, which were like a sudden burst of light in the midst of impenetrable, unfathomable darkness, a single thought stood out clearly, irrefutably, beyond question. How utterly different everything would be in this courtroom, in Israel, in Germany, all over the world, if only more such stories could have been told. The concentration and extermination camps of the Holocaust did more than take the lives of millions of Jews and other peoples. They sought to render those people superfluous, meaninglessness, meaningless, to erase them from memory. But in listening to the stories told at the trial, Aaron concludes that in this effort of erasure, 
the Nazis failed. The story she heard told and retold of victims and everyday heroes of the resistance are bursts of light. They prove, she argues, the holes of oblivion do not exist. Even in the most dark of times, and even in totalitarian regimes, the human spirit, the spirit of freedom, will shine, and there will be others who survive and remember and tell the stories about those who died with dignity and fought to survive. I am honored to be here with you on this occasion, commemorating the victims of the Holocaust. May their memory last, and may it continue to throw light and hope upon our future.
house where 